And that's how you blow another game, as we are now tied with the Spurs for most blown 15-point leads in the league, with six. And those games are the difference between being essentially the 10th seed and being out of the play in a, you know, tied for the 5th, 6th seed, right? That's what is so inf just frustrating about it. And the whole fourth quarter felt like 2022 NBA Finals uh, game one where we were just full on in control, but had some mislapses to end the quarters, which here at the end of the second quarter, we let Harden hit that free ball and they went on a run to end the second half where we, you know, should have essentially been up more. And at the end of the third quarter, where instead of a wide open, well, not a wide open, but, you know, Draymond misses a floater and uh, they go on the other hand and Terrence Mann hits a free ball, which is just a bad omen. And, and it was, instead of a 16-point game, a 11-point game, which is not the best swing, but still a swing. And it just kind of spiraled out, of, out on us. In the fourth quarter, where I just rewatched it, essentially, uh, I don't know, man. I, you know, Clay got going a little bit early, but they were getting too many easy baskets anyway, right? They were picking us apart with their pick and rolls whether it was Harden, whether it was Paul George. Uh, Russ was feasting around the rim. Plumlee took advantage of his size, even though he then get, went a little crazy. Uh, Potts here was a missed layup. Um, Kuminga couldn't tip it in. Uh, then, of course, uh, bad, well, not bad, but a weird rebounding night because uh, we weren't out-rebounded by, well, we were out-rebounded, but by just one rebound, but it felt, felt worse. It felt like the Clippers were punk punking us on the boards tonight, uh, whether it was Russ, whether it was Harden a little bit even, uh, of course, their bigs. Uh, it felt like they were kind of punking us, and Russ was the, you know, whole energizing bunny out there for them, and... One of the bigger things also was that Pots here missed those two free throws. That was really rough. Uh, Kuminga got an N1, and at that point it felt like we were gonna figure it out. Uh, but Clay took a little bit of a bad shot once again. Russ on the boards. Uh, Steph turned it over. Three-point play. You get a technical. Uh, I mean, you get a you get a tough Wiggins three ball. Then you make some stupid fouls some give away some easy baskets right and Norman Powell gets wide open looks which is of course not a good thing and all of a sudden it all spiraled on us Kuminga misses an alley-oop actually because he mistimes it they get once again go ahead on the other hand and they get easy baskets right from those pick and roll coverages we were throwing at them whether it was Stuart Harden whether it was somebody on Harden they were kind of picking us apart with over helping because uh, well they they're attacking the paint really well, and of course they have the size advantage on us. And it felt like a night where Trace Jackson Davis might have, you know, been a good impact player there who needed some minutes because, well, uh, we really suffered from their overhelping, right? Norman Powell was getting wide open three balls, right? Those four threes he had in the fourth quarter were pretty much wide open. One of those was solidly contested by Steph, but nothing special. And even with a five, four point lead here with four minutes left, it felt like they were just too ahead. They had too much of a momentum, right? Once again, easy layup for Westbrook off a pick and roll coverage. It really felt like a Warriors type play with, uh, you know, two at Harden. He passes it to the middle and they get an easy basket from a cut. Then a wide open Powell free ball. And Steph took some tough shots here that I did not love. And then those fouls, right? Those fouls were uh, also not helpful, where Wiggins fouls Coffee on a rebound. They go to the line for nothing, right? Don't even force them to take, you know, do something tough on offense to get to the foul line. They just get there. Then if you go on the, go down the other hand, offensive foul, bubble wide open, free ball, Coffee wide open, free ball. And of course, some of those rebounds, like I said. And... We still had some type of chance with Clay, of course, taking the personal foul, but it was, yeah, it was a tough one, of course, because he obviously didn't want the foul there, but it felt like it didn't matter at the end of the day. And we got the stop to at the three, you know, when it was a three-point game, but once again, they punked us on the boards and game over. Um, so 
that was a tough fourth quarter. It really felt reminiscent of the 2022 NBA Finals, like I said. And uh, other than that, right, it was a really good game from us for the first three quarters, is besides the end of the second and end of the third quarter moments. Uh, but the end of the third quarter was just one moment, essentially, and the second quarter, it was uh, bad, close to the half. But at the same time, uh, you know, those mistakes can kill you, right? And James Harden was sensational tonight, got to the line really well. Uh, like I said, he was dealing with the double teams really well and just picking us apart. Russ, 15, 5 and 6, and he was a menace on the boards. All, all of these rebounds were crucial, crucial. Uh, Norman Pavel, sensational in the fourth. Got wide open shots. Amir Koffe, sensational. Paul George fouled out. It didn't even matter. He was solid, but felt like he didn't have much of an impact in the second half. Uh, some of it was because the fouls, but he had 17 points. Hmm. It didn't even feel like he actually <laughs> went to the free throw line that much in the second half. Maybe I'm kind of uh, miss uh, switching up the second and third quarter in my head. And uh, yeah, they are a really good team, right? And they picked us apart with those pick and rolls. And we were just not able to adjust whether it was maybe put GP2 in more. But at the same time, right, Pochemski was having it, uh, just had it going offensively. 25, 7 and 8, he was sensational offensively. But defensively, we just didn't have an answers for those pick and rolls. They picked us apart, uh, forced the overhelps, which led to wide open threes, which led to cuts. And kind of picked us apart with our own play a little bit. And Draymond wasn't really good today. It felt like he was kind of off 9, 10 and 4, 4 of 12 from the field. Really bad night for Draymond. Kuminga was weird. 13, 8 and 6 is not bad per se, but uh, he wasn't as aggressive as he usually is. Got to the foul line just once, which did not help. The free throw numbers were really in favor of the Clippers. And deservedly so, I would say. Uh, and Kuminga just didn't have the assertiveness tonight I would have li liked, likened to see today. And Wiggins kind of, I don't know, he had some good moments, but was mostly invisible the whole night, which you didn't love. Um, maybe you could have gone with uh, GP2 instead of him, but at the same time, Wiggins defensively, you know, is someone uh, who you normally can rely on, but maybe he did not just have the night tonight, so maybe that was where you could have gone with GP2. Uh, maybe you go with Trace instead of Kuminga or Wiggins here, right? Maybe you should have just set one of one of them two down at the end of the quarter with nothing helping. Uh, where both of them just were and good enough today. Uh, need better rebounding defensively from Kuminga. He is often lost out there, it feels like. Uh, on the defensive rebounding end, but it happens. Uh, Clay, of course, had a really bad night once again. Um, took some bad shots. Uh, 4 of 14, he also was missing wide open shots, which uh, it is what it is. Maybe he should have been 25 minutes for Clay, uh, a little more for GP2, and those Dario minutes need to go to Trace, right? Moody got some minutes with uh, Draymond getting his face uh, destroyed by Zubac, so he got in there because of that and he took advantage, he was really solid, Moses Moody there is. But I would have liked to see maybe those 16 minutes for Loon and Saric to be 16 minutes for Trace. I know Loon technically did not have a bad game, but uh, I feel like Trace would have still been a better option. And it would allow us to play as fast as we like, like to play, which we, we didn't do as well in the second half, it felt like. And we also uh, didn't put the ball in Wiggins or Kuminga hand, or in Wiggins' or Kuminga's hands as much uh, tonight. Um, for whatever reason, because Pots got going, I suppose. Steph, of course, was 15 of 31, 9 of 19. He was uh, really good, but maybe you would like him to see more of those Wiggins coming up and rolls, but they also defended when we went to them a little bit. They defended them really solidly. So, uh, hey, three quarters have played were really good. And then in the fourth quarter, it just uh, kind of unraveled on us where the Clippers got going, they got wide open looks, they dis dismantled our pick and roll coverage, whether it was sending to Ed Harden, like I said, whether it was uh, trapping the ball handler, whether, whether it was just one-on-one -on -one for Harden. And when they 
Of course, it also helped, like I said, when they missed some shots, they got some really crucial rebounds from Russell Westbrook, from Amir Kofi, I think, had one. And, yeah, that, yes, that was the one at the end. And we also had some untimely fouls, which did not help. Pods missing those uh, free throws, two of six from the free throw line is really rough. Uh, so, a rough night, but we have an opportunity to, well, redeem ourselves in Utah again, who they lost to the Lakers. Again, today, they lost to the Lakers without LeBron today, pretty handily. So maybe, uh, you know, they, of course, uh, are on a bit of a down, down skid. They've lost three straight now. So they're maybe maybe they are due for a win, right? Uh, but um, you really need to, need to win that one to stay above 500, 27, 26, heading to the All-Star break and... Uh, you'll go, you know, you have a really good month overall, a really good stretch before the All-Star break, and you can go uh, rejuvenate and hopefully, um, hopefully, hopefully build on to the momentum after the All-Star break. We'll see, man. We really could be, we really could have been out here if we haven't hadn't blown so many games, which is the most frustrating things, right? Uh, if we win... Six of five, we went six 15 point lead blown. So, if we win four of those games, then we're 30 22, which is somewhere around here, right? Uh, of course, with uh, those three games being rest scheduled. Um, so that is that, anyway. As always, we can't also run to others, a tough one, but hopefully, we bounce back against Utah. I'll be here as you always know, and love yourself as much as possible. And yes, sir.